Hello and welcome everybody to another wonderful night of race and action here. We're back, finally, after the long, long wait with the HCK Beagle Super Speedway League. And except this year, uh, this season, I think they expanded it a little bit to not just the Super Speedways. I think we got a couple extra tracks in here uh, in this schedule, but you know, we can definitely touch on that later on. For right now, we're going to get this party started and give you the national anthem, and uh, then we'll do all our introductions and kind of just run through what's going on here. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in Here we go, getting ready for this race in action. We got cars out there for qualifying right now. Uh, we'll bring you some of that action in just a second. 
I am Alan Brown, and I am joined in the booth, as always, by Mr. Alan English. Alan, how are you doing tonight, man? It's been a long, long wait for these guys. Yeah, it's been too long since we've seen these guys take the track, and uh, we're getting back to it in style tonight at nighttime here at Daytona for the Daytona 150, uh, brought to you by Mule Burger Custom Homes. Good to see them on as a sponsor uh, for some of these races this season. Yeah, this HCK Beagles Racing League was so much fun last season. I'm thrilled that they brought us back to do uh, broadcasting duties again tonight and uh, really looking forward to it. And down there on pit road, getting ready for another great season of race and action here. It's Mr. Adam Turner. Adam, how are you doing tonight, man? Man, I'm doing great. You can't do any better when you're starting off at a super speedway, starting the season off. Daytona 150, Muehlberger Homes. So got, they've got two fast repairs, 75% fuel and unlimited tires so a lot of teamwork is going to play into this the uh track is cool 71 degrees beers are cold everything is looking awesome again to watch these guys i'm, I'm looking forward to it and i like to watch the team aspect of how these guys kind of work their way around the two and a half mile track as we take a look at tonight's race info great um weather here really nothing uh, too much to say other than it's a night race here at daytona which i think every race at daytona should just about be a night race there's not a whole lot of better looking tracks out there uh, lit up by the lights scattered around here tonight um, also bringing us to that key to the race it's going to be get out to a clean start here just being the opener to their season you don't need to win the race because uh, you can't win the season just off of the first race, but at the same time, you can definitely hurt your chances with the bad result here. Yeah, you can lose a lot of points starting out, and you really don't want to do that in the first race of the season. And uh, We will see the big one at some point tonight. It's a big field, so it's pretty much unavoid unavoidable, isn't it, Adam, when you get this many cars out on the, or this many trucks out on the track, such close proximity. I mean, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah, I mean, these guys are good. We've seen them in the past. They, they're they all good drivers of the truck. But we all know there will be a big one. And that's what I like to see. You know, mayhem, crashes, hatred. Maybe we'll see some fighting out there. I don't know. Uh, but first, the first race of the season should be pretty calm. But it look, looks like we, we have about 30 cars out there, 30 trucks out on the track, man. That's going to be uh, pretty impressive to watch. Uh, you ain't kidding. That's uh, quite a few more trucks than what we saw last season. I think we had right around 18, 19 trucks. So we're doubling that field size here as we uh, continue to get people in for qualifying as we're kind of heading through this field. whole bunch of new names out here like the uh, Mr. Rick Spencer Walt here. Uh, he's definitely a new one. We've seen uh, you know Kyle Jackson also being new. Uh, but we also got a lot of old faces out there as well, one of them being that 10 of Stone Hutchinson. Yeah, Hutch is back, and uh, uh, his so is his fans. He's already got a couple folks on YouTube, Jonah Woods and, and uh, Nash E, both saying, uh, Stone Hutch, it's your year. And uh, uh, Nash says, Stone Hutchinson for president. So, <laughs> St uh, Stone's fans are definitely back so and this guy's popular his family is, uh, that, that's awesome i love to see him out there again uh you know like share the post you can share it with the more people that share it the more people are going to see these guys race and it makes a for a good time and we're just here watching like the rest of y'all and we enjoy it just as much as uh you know the race fans so you go ahead and like and share the posts and check out our sponsor for tonight's race, Muehlberger Homes. Yeah, they like have a it. website. Yes, sir. Uh, it's uh, MuehlbergerCustomHomes.com. Uh, They're also on Facebook, though, if you want to give them a look and definitely like and uh, share their page and their posts. And uh, It's a home builder up in Three Rivers, uh, Michigan area. They, they do a lot of custom homes up there. They do quality work. This isn't your you know, run-of-the-mill you know, half butt type job they do in these little subdivisions. These are quality homes, quality construction, quality components. 
uh, everything from the furnaces and the down to the faucets. They use 100% Delta, you know, faucets. Uh, you, you just take a look at their website and you'll see it's definitely a difference with uh, Mule Burger Custom Homes. They do a great job. So if you're in the Three Rivers, Michigan area or somewhere right around there close, go ahead and give them a call and go hit up their website. As we uh, slowly end qualifying here, it looks like uh, Curtis is one of the last ones to take a time. And look at that, jumping all the way to the top of that leaderboard. Well, a track like this, here's my problem. I don't, do you want to be in the lead at the beginning? I'm not sure. You know, this is what I like to call chump to champ, champ to chump racing. You just never know. You can go from the back to the front in no time at Daytona, especially in these trucks, the way they, the arrow moves on them. Yeah, they punch a big hole in the air, as we mentioned a lot last season. And, uh, the trucks are back, and uh, there's going to be some, they suck up so well, you know, uh, at least before they get any damage on them. So uh, watch that nose. Try not to drag it on the outside wall at all or uh uh, damage it in any way because you get a fender hanging out that thing's gonna be like a sail that it is but on top of that let's uh kind of go through what the uh kind of conditions we got here for these guys as um you know like whether they got fast repairs or uh anything like that because i know it's been a while let's uh kind of run through that do we got what, what do we got there turner uh you know two fast repairs which you're definitely going to need one at some point, I'm going to guess. 75% fuel, unlimited tires. So 75% fuel is going to make it a little bit interesting here with the 150-mile race, 60 laps. Uh, we're going to see some cool teamwork, I think, and uh, some cool pit strategy. So it's all going to play into it. And we've got a cooler track, so we'll kind of see if that has anything to do with how the race progresses as well 71 degrees out there right now as we um about 30 seconds away here from finishing up qualifying big field 31 cars so far not everybody putting in a qualifying time. Uh, we still got Robert uh, Parrot. Is it Parrot or Parrot? Hopefully it's Parrot. Uh, he, that he, 100 truck. He looks like he... You think he might be the admin tonight? Uh, he might be that uh, race director here tonight. Race okay. director? Boy, that's a that's quite a statement. How do you get that job? Seems like a high-paying gig. Man, I don't know if I'd want that job, especially especially on a track where you know some big stuff's going to happen. Yeah, you're going to have to be able to referee all the mayhem. Uh, and that a lot of cool paints <clears throat> with some cool American flags and whatnot. Go ahead, Brent. I was just going to say, as we uh, start to get all lined up here, ready for this race in action, let's uh, run through this grid. Got 30 trucks here, so this, is, this one's going to take a good second to get through with... Uh, Mr. Curtis Critchley winning pole position. He's going to be starting up there on that front row on his outside. He's got Cody Staten. Good to see uh, one of the Staten brothers back. And if I do believe uh, his brother, or I believe his brother, uh, is uh, out there as well. You've got Rick Spencer Walt up there in third with Joshua Moore on his outside. you got the 31 of Brad Taylor uh, starting here fifth with Austin Johnson in sixth. The 42 of Kevin Winker will be starting here seventh with Wayne Dewey in eighth. You got Eric Stoy starting in ninth. And rounding out that top ten is going to be Rodney Griffin. Now you got the number five of Stumpy starting in 11th. The 75 of Brian Skidmore starting in 12th position. The 66 of Paul Ferdiani uh, starting 13th. The 6 truck of Paul Durkee starting in 14th. The 7 of Rick LePage uh, starting... Sorry, I'm losing my thing here. Uh, starting in 15th. Uh, the 64 of Donald uh, Turboville starting in 16th. The 28 truck of Henry Wyndham starting 17th. 
Andrew Hansley, the fourth in that number 24 machine, starting in 18th. Uh, Bay Area Rob, Rob Chowdhury in the 408 machine, starting in 19th. The 76 of Michael Hicks will round out your top 20. Yeah, starting 21st, number 10, everybody's favorite here on the YouTube, Stone Hutchinson. Uh, number 60, Kyle Jackson, 22nd. 54, Brandon Coleman, 23rd. 20, the number 21 car, Mike McMillan, 24. 88 of Zachary State in the other part of the state, boys. I think we talk about that's like a Western gang from the Old West, 25th. State and boys. Rob the <laughs> yeah. state coach again. Yeah, 45 of Michael Granolds, Granolds, 26, 8 of Derek Puckett, 27th, number 2, Rowdy. Brian Doty, 28th, Justin Lawson in the 20 machine, 29th, and there's the man, Gregory Turner, uh, number 69 car in 30th place, and man, what a feel we got. What a field indeed, as we take this, uh, quick little parade lap around and then take to this green flag and uh man it's it's gonna be exciting i don't know uh what we're gonna expect here other than we're gonna see some some good race in action that's that's all i know i love everybody's tagging up their friends and and their fans on uh on uh facebook right now we love that we love all the comments on youtube hutch hutch's army is out there again today as uh, Zach and and Lisa are on now, and Nash commenting as well. So good to see all y'all on there, and uh, we're ready to get this season started out right tonight at Daytona under the lights. That we are as the pace car is about to make that dive down onto pit road. Here we go, Curtis and Cody on that front row. Green flags waving off and running. Season Oper in the HCK Beagles, and away we go. Two wide, down, off, and running into turn number one. A great start there for Curtis on that inside line. He's definitely got some help there from Rick Spencer Walt, uh, giving him a nice push. It looks like that top line slowly getting formed up as we see a car there uh, move up to that top line to try to fill in some gaps and holes. and maintain as much momentum as possible but we're already into the backstretch here on lap number one side by side racing bumper to bumper racing and man oh man here we go well, look yep. at 15 to 51 and a 45 all of there i love trucks. those flags man. running together up front Absolutely. a lot of people changing their mind uh what uh, lane they want to run in here everybody kind of gets situated a lot of people are more comfortable running that yellow line on the bottom and other people a little bit more adventurous want to get up in the top lane because they know if they get enough people to join them that fat that top line could be pretty fast that it can it's all about building up that momentum and we've seen it before it doesn't take that many trucks to actually really make a move here so if you got a line full of these trucks uh, you can definitely make up some much needed ground to some of these guys kind of in the back they might just be waiting for that little bit of a uh, kind of like shenanigans and cautions and whatnot to let things all settle down but you know we're uh here clear on lap number two we're about to go on to lap number three and really not too many issues to be seen i want to thank uh bruce muehlberger again for uh sponsoring this race muehlberger custom homes at three rivers michigan uh, if you're looking for having a home built and you want it done right, you want quality components, uh, hit them up. They're on Facebook. They're on the inter interwebs as well at uh, MuleburgerCustomHomes.com. So looks like the 15 of Cody Staten trying to pinch down on the 27 there a little bit. And it was able to get that side draft coming out of the corner, but that has now stalled a little bit on that outside as they... Uh, kind of enter turn number three so he's going to fall back a little bit i think he was clear for the lead for just a millisecond before that bottom line kept rolling through those three trucks cody state and joshua moore and kevin winker team america team america that's their team and obviously you can tell by the paint schemes gotta love that It'll be easy to spot where the teammates are, especially from the chopper cam up here where I'm watching it. 
You will always be able to see where that team is together on the track. As everybody uh, seems to be pretty patient here, not too many big moves really to be made as of yet. Again, we're still only on lap four out of 60, so we got a lot of laps left here, a lot of time as well left here. So uh, plenty of uh, plenty of patience out there. That's what she, uh, we should say. As right now, our biggest mover so far is gonna be that 69 of Gregory Turner, Little Rimmer. He's up eight as of right now, working his way back up from basically dead last. And man, he's a little bit of a man on a mission. He's he's picking his lines. He's not being too aggressive, but he's uh, definitely slowly picking his way up through this field. And back up front, Staten moved down to that bottom line. Uh, he's got his teammates on the outside line. Let's see if they play a little merry-go-round up here at the front. As, uh, uh, Mitch Broyles on uh, YouTube coining the hashtag, hashtag Stone Squad. But uh, they're not alone as Unbolted Elf and Joel Moore are pulling for Josh Moore. So is Linda on there as well. So everybody's got uh, some supporters out there tonight, so that's good. As things get changed up just a little bit, I don't know if we're trying to rotate through as we got a little bit of contact there between the uh, 27 and the 51, or excuse me, might have been the 42, as uh, those two kind of squeeze together a little bit. And uh, Man, when you, when you get that close to the air that comes off of these trucks, man, it does weird, weird things. I really wish you could see the air to see what's going on because there is a lot going on there. As, as a lot of these guys in the upper line look like they're kind of swing down a little bit, put a little side draft, put a little extra uh, uh, wind on the spoiler of that truck below you. That'll help slow them down. It won't speed you up, but it'll slow them down. And uh, We see these American flag uh, Team America trucks. They're putting a little bit of side draft on that bottom line. Yeah, they're, they're doing a little bit of pension to the 27 at Curtis Critchley. And he just kind of caught in no man's land here. He just needs to hold his ground, uh, keep it keep it straight, basically, because he's uh, fighting Team America right now at up front. These guys have done quite a bit of practice um, here leading up to the season opener. So uh, there's a reason why you're seeing clean racing here tonight, folks, is because these guys... Uh, do care about putting on a clean race and good entertainment for y'all. Uh, they put in, they put in the man hours. They've, uh, they've definitely done some practice in here, and it shows. Yeah, you are not kidding. As really, our top five or six really haven't changed all that much, other than your typical little bit of a lazy Susan that we'll see here at these super speedways of people moving up and then moving back a little bit and then moving back up, just that kind of stuff going on. But I mean, like I said, at 69 of Gregory Turner, now up 12 spots, sitting there in 18th. He's uh, he's putting in the work. Is he putting in the work a little too early? That's what my question is. Andrew Hansley, the fourth, we've seen him before. He's he just dropped back. He's in position 30. But nobody here has lost the draft. They're all together, one big pack. And I think, you know, maybe this strategy of right around in the back a little bit, as long as you're in that draft with all the other car trucks uh, I think it's not a bad idea because there is going to be some kind of mayhem at some point. It's a long race so uh, I think everybody's kind of content just to click off some laps now as you see the second truck on the outside line there got pretty wiggly. As the they continue to kind of just slowly and slowly get closer and closer squeezing each other together just it, man with I mean we've we're only a sixth of the way there, just about, and I mean, we, we even have pit stops left. I don't know why. Uh, I I don't know if that's necessarily the right thing to do right now, but at the same time, you know, as long as it stays green flag, you know, it's it's all racing. So here's the thing we always run into, Adam, and you can back me up on this: is that when we get at these super speedways, and if it stays green for too long. Uh, these guys are going to be green flag pit, pit stopping, and that is not something you want to do by yourself. You're going to have to kind of work it out with your team. Uh, that way you're not stuck without a drafting partner, a dancing partner, as it were. Uh, really, really lose a lot of ground. Yeah, when you're still running too wide most of the way through the field, 
you need fuel and you're up top, uh, that's an issue. That could be an issue at some point. It's fairly racy at this this point in the race, but I haven't seen anything, you know, egregious. We haven't had anybody act like they stole the car from the truck just yet, but I think that's coming. Their patience will run out. We've seen it with uh, all the races we've done in our career of broadcasting and I racing. These guys eventually want to get to the front. And oh, as we got big contact, almost three wide up here at the front. Everybody able to figure that one out, but man, it's I, I don't know if uh, they changed the tires on these things or something, but these guys are looking not 100% in control of that truck at all times. These trucks yeah. are very forgiving, but uh, Adam, you can speak to it. Once you, uh, once you start wiggling around too much, uh, they will lose grip in the rear end. Yeah, that's the, that's the aerodynamics of uh, the package that it has been built by iRacing. I racing a great simulation. It's not a video game. Everybody knows that. Uh, really great platform, and I think the trucks make for the best racing, especially on these super speedways. Uh, wow, they're getting real racy up there with the 27 and Curtis Critchley. I think he's tired of being stuck in there. Well, at the same time, if you're Curtis, you you would think he's in a pretty good spot, right? He's not out there, not necessarily wasting a whole bunch of fuel. He's getting some... Uh, able to save a little bit not leading this entire pack but and as well if we do get to that point of green flag pit stops he's on the preferred spot he's on that inside he's not going to have to try to force his way down yeah and thanks tower operator on uh youtube pulling for the 51 of josh w moore as he's riding up in the front there still having a good night so far yeah i guess we'll know when it starts getting close to uh, uh, needing some gas because there's going to be guys trying to make <laughs> make some room down there on that bottom line, uh, like you mentioned earlier, so they can get down there and actually get to pit road. I'm sitting here watching Stone Hutchison with that yellow Kodak truck. Uh, right behind him is another one of them state boys. Uh, he's probably wants to get up front with his uh, Team America. Gregory Turner right behind him so there's some pressure back here in the back and some guys wanting to move up it looks like yeah but you can also see they're they're spread out not you know losing the draft kind of spread out but just leaving that little bit of extra room for if something were to happen or uh, give giving themselves an out absolutely and uh, you know uh, little Remmer in that 69 machine he's not the only one that's been making up some spots uh, right there in front of him, uh, Rowdy Puckett in that number eight truck. He's up eight spots so far. So uh, these guys are uh, these guys are getting it early. Hopefully, uh, and I just I worry so much about being mid pack uh, uh, in the case that something happens because you know when guys start ducking off to pit, there's going to be guys that break differently. Uh, we might have some trucks hitting each other trying to get down the pit road, so hopefully not, but we have seen it. That well, we have. If it creates anger and uh, stuff like that, that'd be really cool. I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I hear a little bit of chatter on the radio. Ooh, that's the 15 and the 42 make a little bit oh, of contact. The 42 comes down in front of the 27. Man, oh man, it, I don't know if he glitched through that bumper or what, but I didn't see room that he obviously, I guess, had. Because, man, he, oh man. He scraped the bugs off the front of that truck behind him, I guarantee you. He's wide now. Yeah, three wide up here at the front. No help for the 27 who's riding there in the middle. The 45 kind of being pushed out wide. They're going to figure this one out, go back to two wide with uh, the 27 there uh, making things... Uh, work out back again it's the 31 uh up here at the front it's actually uh marked the 13 on the scoring sheet here that uh you know he's uh jumped up to that top line of uh, rick spencer walt so now uh he's trying to add his name into that mix and so we got a canadian pushing the canadian between rick and curtis oh are we talking team canada versus team america 
Yeah, come on. Yeah. I'd like to that see that. That could be a fight. I like that. Thanks, Jordan Great. Mitchell, for uh, being on YouTube. Also a part of the hashtag Stone Squad out there pulling for Stone Hutchinson. Oh, big waves there around the fourth row back. I believe that might have been uh, Eric Stoy just maybe getting a little bit of tight coming off of that corner and drifted out towards that wall. And it's not going to take much to cause something here. And uh, again, good job from him keeping it under control and able to keep this ball rolling. Oh, as we got oh. the truck turned up front, he saves Ooh. it. Truck up into the wall. Big, big, and big now break. we got that big one. Teammates oh my got God. into it. Yeah. 75 is flipping upside down. Got trucks and carnage scattered everywhere. Well, I guess we know when they're going to pit now. Uh, a lot of guys are going to be using the first of two quick repairs. Wow, that was what wild. Crash. That's going to make a wild replay. Yeah. No kidding. As uh, we scroll back up. And I hear some anger on the little chatter on the radio here. I'm, oh, yeah, they're going secret after Secret radio. And, uh, yeah, the 75 flipping all over the place. Trying to get a good uh, camera view of this. I'm trying to see. Uh, one of those America trucks in the wall, I think, may have got this started. What do you want a Brad Taylor, boy? He survived that somehow. That, one, that yeah. was what started it. Yeah, he had Cody Staten up there just getting up into that wall and uh, bouncing back down into some traffic. And man, oh man, talk about the mess that was made out there on uh, on the racetrack. Because once it starts, it's really hard to get out of the way. I mean, you can jam the brakes all you want, but when you're going that fast... Uh, the best thing to do is just find, an escape, find a, a hole somewhere while you're slowing down because uh, you're not going to be able to stop in time. We do have one truck pushing another. That's the four and the eight, I believe. A little sportsmanship, maybe a little teamwork there. One truck pushing another. Trying to get them on the pit road. Is got a bunch of trucks coming into the pits now. All right, we do, so we're going to have ourselves a... A little bit of a uh, race coming down off of pit road here. We'll uh, see who wins this one. Oh man, as the 27 overshoots his box by a um, mile and a half, just coming oh, in a, no. a little too hot. Don't know if he was able to see that uh, sign, even though he was in that first box, but he's going to lose a lot of spots due to that. So Rick From Spencer. The lead too. And Rick Spencer Walt's going to be able to take over that lead, followed by Kevin Winker and Zach Staten. Man alive. Yeah, we had some guys that I think had with the toe, so that's going to cost them a lap or two. And, you know, they're hopefully they can get their lap back. We've, we've seen some really good racing, and that was a fun Fun racing incident, let's put it that way. I enjoyed watching. I enjoyed a little of the anger on the radio, too. Yeah. It's always kind of fun to pump up the drama a little bit. Get a few more viewers for our, uh, yeah, our well, new as, sponsor. So. As, as you all know, I mean, we've watched quite a few races. And, and in leagues, uh, the longer you race together, the, the anger we're going to turmoil builds over time you know you kind of learn these guys learn how they race and uh you kind of create rivalries and i think that's that's what we're going to start learning tonight who is the rival to who uh, canada versus team america i think that's that's a good one right there crepes versus pancakes loaded fries versus poutine uh troopers versus mounties i mean you name it canada versus america let's do it Wow, that's that's a. You really thought about this? Yeah, I, d I didn't have any brain power involved in that, but those are the cool things I thought about in Canada. Like poutine is really good. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know what that is, but it's awesome. So we got uh, 
everything kind of cycling back through here and man we got some uh people who made it through that somehow like uh donald tubeville he uh he is up Turbo, 10 up yeah. he's up uh like you know just about 10 spots there in that fifth six area you got uh michael hicks up there in ninth up 11 you got stone up 10 in 11th brian uh Doty up into uh, 13th, up 15, and man, oh man, this list goes on and on. But heartbreak for the 51 of Josh Moores. Um, he's going to be scored, I think, two laps down here now. Lost 25 spots. Him and Cody Staten, you know, who uh, was up front and caught a piece of that wall, as you mentioned, down 28 spots, so... Yeah, they're showing a lap down on my screen. But either way, they've okay. lost quite a bit of position. But uh, not over for them as they do have lucky dogs and stuff turned on. So uh, it only takes a couple more, uh, couple more uh, yellows to maybe get those guys back on the lead lap. It ain't over. Don't quit, guys. Come on. No, there's forty. What do we have? Forty laps to go. So forty-one. We're good. As we get all stacked back up and ready to go, pace car coming down pit road, green flags waving, and here we go. Doesn't look like everyone was quite grouped together here, there just yet, but still we have enough trucks uh, up at the front to go two wide racing. We got uh, Rick up there in the lead. He's got, I believe, Brad Taylor right behind him, giving him a little bit of a push. Got Kevin Winker on that outside, trying to gather up that line, gather some momentum. And man, oh man, oh, who went all the way down low there? Uh, that that was one of the uh, teammates up there, one of the America teammates. He dove down onto the apron, didn't like what he was seeing up there, just letting the field go by. Joshua Moore, 51. That Moore? Okay. I guess he didn't get the wave around that he was thinking he might get. Yeah, he's, he's back in it. He's back in, and he'll be fine. Hopefully he doesn't lose the draft here. Yeah, he's, he's sticking to the draft. There's a few guys, unfortunately, behind him that are beyond the draft, and that's going to cause them issues if as, uh, they don't get a quick As run. we're three wide here in the middle, the 27 not taking up that much time to try to get back up to that front, able to split the gap there and uh, get right back on up. Now sitting there in that third row, he's got the five to his inside of uh, Stephen Naylor, but... Yeah, he's, uh, I, I think now no one uh, kind of, just what happened, I mean, we got a, almost a solid 20 laps in before we saw a caution. So, you know, if we get another 20, you know, split this one up into thirds, I think we still might need one more pit stop either way. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they'll have to come down at least one more time, but I bet they'll get an opportunity. Uh, as we see some of these guys using the side draft to just drive up the middle. Uh, was it that black machine up there? I believe was the one that man, he was just dry, he was just slamming it right up the middle. And when you're side drafting on both inside and outside lanes like that, driving up the middle, you can do that and get away with it. And we have another one dropping back here, trying to locate him. Yeah, that was the eight of Rowdy Bucket. I think he was just I coming out, just of came out of the pit. Out of the pit, yeah. Okay, he looked like he was getting passed in warp speed there. Oh, yeah. yeah. But we still got quite a few cars up here on that lead lap. Uh, Eric Stoy and Wayne Dewey kind of being on that last edge of that, and they are unfortunately out of the draft. We'll have to see if they can uh, work together. Maybe try to uh, catch back up. I mean, who knows? Anything can happen, but uh, everybody else all grouped up into this ball of racing that we got going on up here at the front as Kevin Winker on that outside line getting a great push from Rodney trying to get down to that bottom line and he will oh they're wrecking back here the 75 spinning across the track I think he had a little help there check up guys check up little rimmer already on the radio uh taking the blame for that yeah, one 69 of gregory turner uh, took the hit on that one he but it was his fault 
Oh, man. Let's see what happened. It looked like there was a lot going on there. It looked like the 28, I believe, was up in that wall and uh, just really nowhere to go for uh, Greg Turner and got ended up down into that 75. And uh, Thankfully, only a couple cars involved in that one, so not too, too bad, but that will bring out the second caution here. Yeah. Are you going to the pits? Is everyone going to the pits? I mean, I would personally, but I don't know. What What are your thoughts there, English? I, I'd stay out. If it, if it was me and I'm somewhere in the middle of the track, I'm going to try to make some track position here. What if you're in the rear? What if you're in the rear of the field? Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go in. If I'm in the middle or in the front, I'm staying out. If I'm in the back third, yeah, I'm in a pit because you're not going to really lose anything. Uh, thanks so much, too, for Carol Hansley's back this season. Uh, pulling for Andrew, and Andrew's having kind of a rough night, so he needs all the support he can get. So thanks, Miss Carol. We appreciate you. Yeah, they got great support out there on the YouTube and uh, oh, yeah. whatever. What do we have? We got YouTube, Twitch, and FaceTime. And we have everything. FaceTime. Uh, yeah, basically <laughs> worldwide. So... But these guys are putting on the show. We're not. They're the ones that we're watching and really enjoying. Uh, I think it's been a really clean race. Y'all have, if you've never raced an eye racing event, I mean, it's not as easy as it looks. You don't just turn left. There's a lot involved. Like you, the air will push the car around the track, banking, the temperature of the track. Uh, there's just a lot involved, you know. Yeah, it's great simulation. That's why the big boys, the real NASCAR guys, to get on here and, and do this stuff. Yeah, you ain't kidding. It's a uh, these guys are not professionals, and do you know what? That I think that's what makes the racing even better. No one, you know, they they don't do this for a living. Everyone here's got a day job like the rest of us, and you know, this is this is a hobby. But have you seen the actual NASCAR drivers getting on here and doing eye racing? They they're not half as patient as these guys. They're not as safe. I mean, it's a it's a it's a train wreck whenever you get actual NASCAR drivers in eye racing. But uh, watching these guys out here, I mean, they take it very seriously and uh, they're very skilled. Don't don't get it wrong. They might all have day jobs and be uh you know construction workers and plumbers and uh, professionals, but uh, they're out here to win. And uh, or they could, they support. may not. What? How do you know they have a job? Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just in their mom's basement, or maybe they're like uh, just rich, so they don't have to work. I mean, <laughs> you never know. That's yeah, the beauty know. of it. It's everybody's welcome here. Doesn't matter who you are, uh, what you do for a living. If you do anything, who cares? It's really awesome uh, to get involved in eye racing. I'm a huge fan, and obviously, because we spend our time broadcasting it, you know, we I retired from from it because uh, I'm, I'm having too much fun watching these other guys. They're really fun to watch. Yeah, and it gives a lot of exposure. Uh, uh, you know, game streaming and stuff has, has really taken off in recent years, and it's a great opportunity for companies like uh, Muleberger Custom Homes to sponsor a race and get their name out there. So if you're in the Three Rivers michigan area uh and you need a home built you got a piece of land and you want to put a great quality home something that's going to last for a long time uh, definitely hit those guys up because uh, they're on here putting this show on for you tonight uh they're making well, this happen tonight so yeah guys. i'm on the red river and i'd like to have them come down here and build me a home looking at their website really quality stuff i love looking at muleberger custom homes I like seeing companies like that uh, join uh, HCK Beagles and us. And really cool to have an awesome sponsor on board. As we take the exit out of turn four here, pace car is going to be coming down once again. We're going to have oh almost halfway through this race already. Wow, it's going fast. That it is, so 
Green flags out and waving. Kevin Winker on that inside line. He's got Rick Spencer Walt on that outside with some help from Curtis. So, man, a little, uh, little sloppy there from that inside line. That's going to allow the outside of those two trucks able to get right on around and out in front. It's going to leave the 31 of Brad Taylor looking to maybe try to go to that outside but really nobody else around as we're kind of single filed up here at the front we got a little too wide racing here with uh stone hutchinson but he is slowly making his way backwards because there's absolutely nothing going on on that outside yeah he needs to drop down as soon as he can it looks like he will uh, oh, he's got so help from behind now stone's got all the friends on the youtube but his friends out here look like they're lacking a little bit <laughs> yeah. Carol Hansley saying, I wish I was rich. <laughs> you and me both, Carol. <laughs> I agree. Let's, let's uh, hit the lotto tonight. And Connor Harrell on uh, YouTube saying, Hutch and Six, keep on going. So, what as do we call them? The Stone Squad. The Stone Squad, yes. Yeah, as Brandon Coleman. And that 54 trying to get that top line working together here as we got a whole scatter up front. Not anymore. Sorry. I was watching the front. Yep. No, it's uh, everybody kind of got all scattered and checked up and everything. So that's going to allow that top line to try to work its way back together, gather up that momentum, and make a charge up here to the front. I, I'm telling you, within the next couple laps, we'll see a car out there up at the front too wide. And that was crazy. Y'all just stop like a coyote in the tracks when you whistle at him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're knocking the rust off here with HCK Beagles racing. Yeah, it's been a while, guys. Uh, having fun, though. How could you not have fun watching this kind of stuff, man? Oh, we had a truck jump Ooh. down to that bottom lane. A couple guys trying to get down in that bottom lane. As the upper lane is just not quite as organized as they were they're still inching their way forward as they're trying to make their way around the 88 of zach staten right now up 20 spots sitting in fifth as here we go there's that top line gathering up that momentum only a couple more cars left here and look who's leading that top line that's uh, the 42 of kevin winker Oh. Coming down, changing Jumped up the down. lanes. That was a good move there. So that's going to stall things out here for just a second as uh, we continue to kind of go around and get everything all back to too wide. And I mean, we're too wide basically uh, all the way back from fourth, but man, it. This one's taking a bit. I, th I think people are being a little bit more patient, just maybe wanting to ride that inside line as here comes Winker. He dropped in line, maybe just to have a little reprieve, get some momentum back, wait for that top line to get rolling again. And here we go. We're going to be too wide up here for the lead between Kevin and Rick. No, as that top line once again kind of stalls out there in the middle of the yeah. corner. So Rick and Curtis doing a great job working together. Winker trying to use that side draft, but really can't make it work. Is now we've got a car in the middle, a truck in the middle. I'm sorry. Winker can't exactly. Oh no! Winker gets turned down through the inside grass. Still green. Still green. I think everyone was able to either keep not, it not on now. the yells out. Forty-five got turned there. Yeah, the forty-two. I'm not sure if that truck. Moving up just didn't know they were clear or Michael Ground uh, got caught up after the guys went in the grass and then some other things happened. This is gonna be a very telling replay. And it is as soon as I can uh, get to it. Da -da -da. Yeah, there's a lot of checking up and uh, a racing incident. I would call it the medium one. Not the big one? Not the little no. one? The medium one. I yeah, think. it's the medium one. I gotcha. Man, it's... I don't know. That's a little close. 
We'll uh, take another look at it here. Just a slight different angle. 27 just hey. up in there. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's close. Curtis Critchley in the 27 machine just trying to shoot for a gap that wasn't there quite yet. I mean, it happens. It's plate racing. Is anybody going to fight? Us? Do our YouTube viewers want any rivalries? What's going on out there? They want they want to see fights like me, or am I the only guy? Fighting? Well, they, they do have their certain people that they are pulling for, and we're joined once again this week by the 44th President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, on YouTube, saying "Sweet Home Alabama." I guess he's just naming his favorite song, maybe. Uh, Jonah Woods saying, hey, Stone, don't get in front until the last lap or you'll be wrecked out. That happens a lot here at Daytona. And, uh, Zach uh, GD saying, bring it back to Hampton. Hampton, Stoner, so. The Stone Hampton. squad out there. Is it like Hampton? Is that like the Hamptons? Is That's where the rich people are. I, I Hampton. So. What a bunch of nice uh, pit stops we had there and are they going to be good? I don't think so. I think we're going to need another and pit no. stop, don't y'all? Yeah. Hey, it's going to be close by the time we go back to green flag. It's going to be under 25 laps here to go. Uh, I think if you're stuck out front pulling everybody along, you might be in trouble. But some of these guys, maybe mid-pack, able to ride three-quarter throttle, they they might be good. I love the running out of fuel you know, at the end deal, too. So hopefully we'll see some of that. Well, Turner, you're going to love this. Jonah Woods on YouTube saying, that 27 dirty. Okay, so, uh, okay. Let me do some research on the 27 truck. Yeah, do some research on the 27. And, uh, I like that. Curtis Critchley. I, I don't remember that name. Maybe I'm stupid. No, I think so. he's a new guy. I'm, I'm not sure that that was intentional or anything. Is he a ringer? He's getting, what? Called, he's getting called out on YouTube, though. So. Well, hey. You're gonna run that that well. You you better be ready for the firepower from the uh, YouTube That's community. Right. Bailey Hughes on Facebook joining us saying, "I got fifty bucks on Stone." Wow. I'm not sure what the. I wish we knew a bookie that could give us some. We do. Some Actually, odds. I don't want to name him. But there's one amongst us. Usually deals in horses. Man. And it sure as heck ain't me. I don't know nothing about horses. I'll talk to you about cattle all day long, but not horses. You know, I, I knew a guy. He named his horse Mayo. Named his horse Mayo? Why? Mayo? Yeah, because mayonnaise. Oh, God. We walked into that one. What just happened here? A, a terrible pun happened that you didn't see coming. It, was, it wasn't bad. I liked it. Since when do you like puns? I didn't know what that means. I'm from, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the dumb areas of the world. Texas, so Oklahoma. About, let's talk about next week. Next week, Tuesday, the 7th of December, uh, HCK Beagles will be at Talladega for 60 laps at Talladega. The Triple T's custom PC uh, race coming from Talladega. So join us next week for that. That's going to be a blast. Uh, yes, yes, indeed, that will as uh, Curtis uh, going to be leading this one off with, I believe, Brandon Coleman on that outside. Brandon Coleman up 21 spots. Same thing with uh, Mike McMillan up 21 spots as well. So we got quite a few big movers. I mean, just about everybody other than Curtis up at the front is up double-digit spots. That's Hampton, Tennessee, Adam. Okay, I can deal with that. As we go back here to green flag racing out in front. No help there pushing that 27 of Curtis, but it's going to leave Brandon plenty of room to jump down inside and uh, get to that bottom line as we now got the 64 of Donald uh, Turbville. Uh, working on that outside line, trying to get everything all worked together. But really, there's there's really no line that's all gathered together here yet. And Turboville is one of those guys, I don't think he was here last season. I could be wrong, but uh, it's 
good to see the 64 of Don Turboville out there. He's got some folks watching, I'm, I'm sure, on the uh, Facebook, I believe. I wonder if he's related to that coach that became a senator or congressman uh, That's in Alabama. There. Oh, Turbo, Tubber, it doesn't matter. Probably related. As so we come across the line with 24 laps here now left to go, and I mean, really, if you're the 64 or the 27 here in this situation, you're really not where you want to be because being up front dragging these two lines along, you're just going to be wasting fuel forcing you to have to maybe do a pit stop here. Uh, someone who is calling it out on that social media, the 10 of Stone Hutchinson, I think, is probably in one of the best spots right now, sitting right around that 7th, 8th spot, uh, just kind of cruising around there, able to lift and not use all that fuel so i think uh, any of these guys in the mid pack of this as of right now probably have the best chance at winning this thing so do you think if we get another caution here which um, it's quite probable do you think a lot of these guys will be good on fuel yeah, uh, that that's questionable wouldn't you think brown i i would i would still come down for a splash anyway uh just to just to be safe and who knows you might uh, have some Green white checker action, so bonus action here if uh, the, something happens. Here's the three guys I'd watch right now. They're having a decent run. I, new names Rick LePage, number seven car in 19 position, Brian Skidmore, and Paul Ferradini. Ferdiani. Fer, it must be Italian. So those guys are just kind of running back there, and they're out of the mayhem. And uh, like I said, champ to chump, chump to champ in no time here in Talladega. These guys are running 185 miles an hour, and uh, stuff happens quick, especially at the end. Uh, I've seen it happen time and time again. I already like uh, back to the front. I already like uh, uh, Paul Ferdiani because he's running my old number, the old 66 machine. Okay, well, there's your there's your new favorite. Mr. Italian, I'm. Oh, I'm not Mr. allowed. Italian. I'm not allowed to have favorites. Well, why well can't we have favorites? I like some of these guys. He's from Pennsylvania. It's got to be Italian. There's a lot of two wide. Uh, pretty stable up front. It doesn't look like a couple of coral snakes dancing with each other up here. It's uh, these guys are keeping it pretty straight. Not a whole lot of weaving back and forth. A lot. A lot of side drafting here about three rows back from the lead. Is that orange machine? Let's see, who is the orange truck? 76 of uh, Michael Hicks. Michael Hicks, he's putting that side draft on, especially in the back stretch area. Let's see if he does it again. Doesn't look like it. He's trying to... Whoa, they're three wide. A couple rows behind him, this white machine. And a red and white truck coming, screaming up the middle here. That middle is... Looks like where a lot of these guys like to be. They try to side draft both sides and just cruise up the middle. Look at these two trucks. Able to make up a whole bunch of ground. That's Rick Spencer Walt. Able to uh, uh, crawl right up through this field and make his way back up to ninth as of right now. But I have a feeling if a hole opens up in the middle once again, you know, we might see a nose peek its way up through there again. I, I can pretty much guarantee you he... We're going to see them try that again because it's working so far. Good. Kyle Jackson up 20 spots. Brandon Coleman up 20. Mike McMillan up 20. That's kind of the changing of the guard here at HCK Beagles Racing. And I'm telling you what, some of these guys that we haven't spoke about before, we got a car on the wall. Windham, uh, Henry Wyndham, 28. Great. He held it. Held it in the wall. He held on to it. That's a like good job. Like a professional. We got a slow mover in the high line right here, middle of the pack. It looks like everyone up and out of the way. So yep. good, good job. Everybody uh, kind of getting through that stressful situation fairly clean. That also let everybody kind of jump down into single file as people kind of scattered around a little bit. And so uh, really no help out there on that top line for the uh, 13 or 31 of Rick Spencer. Yeah, and the eight of Rowdy Puckett, once again, getting down there on that apron, letting the field by because he's kind of stuck by himself right now, um, being a lap down as well. So, good on him to 
not cause any problems, just kind of let everybody go by. Yeah, even 12, and, 12 and 13 uh, positions Paul Durkee and Stumpy in the chicken cock whiskey trucks. That's interesting. I haven't seen that paint job yet. They do have a guy in the uh, league that paints uh, cars. Uh, go to Paints by a Special Ed on uh, YouTube. Hit him up. He can definitely paint you a car. So, Sponsoring a, quite a few races this season as well. So it looks like that top line getting formed up once again here, trying to claw their way back up towards that front you got the 31 of brad taylor trying to uh get up there but just not quite there yet as that bottom line man they're putting in that work you got the two canadians working together of curtis critchley and kyle jackson uh man kyle is all over that bumper of the 27 giving him a big old push looks like they're coming up on some lap traffic up here Yeah, and it looks like that lap traffic will uh, peel down to that uh, kind of apron line here for this backstretch. Let everybody cruise on by at speed. Ooh. The problem is he needs to get back up on track before he goes into the corner. Yeah, it got a little crowded down low there for a second, didn't it? Yeah, a little more lap traffic coming down low. Refined Motorsports up front here. That lower line is staying pretty organized. Look at the run the outside line's getting right here, though. It's probably not going to last long enough for him, for that lead truck to dive down in the front of that 27 machine, but they can get reformed. No, here. but we're going to be three wide here. The 31 not getting, uh, not being patient there. He's going to try to push it on that outside he's got some help from the 20 Ooh. easy guys oh boy oh boy <laughs> able to work that one out and uh we are back to two wide racing here if this is any kind of indication of how this season's gonna go tuesday nights are gonna be wild And wild card Tuesday says the 13 or 31. Man, oh man, swapping positions here up at the front. Side by side, three wide here for the lead between Brad, Rick, and Curtis. And look at the 20 machine running up there. Up 26 spots. Justin Lawson pushing his way into second place. Let's see what happens here as the trucks start to shuffle out. Looks like he'll stay right where he's at. And we're back to two wide racing behind him. Great move there by Justin picking his way up through the middle. Ended up having a car kind of uh, come with him on that middle instead of going out to that outside. So he was able to use that kind of turbo boost of what that middle line's getting all the side drafts and everything was. So able to make up a ton of ground doing that. But, man, it, Rick and... Curtis, it's. I don't see the. Those two are just not gonna get separated. That's a Yahtzee. Looks like Derek Puckett has called it a night. Uh, not able to get that truck where he wanted to uh, keep pace or anything. Uh, we'll see if we can get him to talk to us here in a few minutes. Derek, uh, Rowdy, if you're out there, if you want us to talk to you. Jump in that podium finisher waiting room and uh, we'll pull you up for an interview whenever you're ready. Probably a pretty frustrating night for him, but uh, we'll see if we can't get a few words from him if he's so inclined. As Rick trying to get that top line clear, and he is clear. Is he going to move down? He's splitting the two lanes, and he does move completely down. Move down a little Whoa. too far is maybe a little bit of bump from the 27. As the 27 uh, caught a little bit of that air and was able to suck right on up to him. So 
See, Literally. I wouldn't have moved up right there. We just had that white machine move up into that upper line. I'm not sure that I would have done that. Is that 27? He does have the advantage right now, it looks like. These lines just not quite as organized as they once were, but everybody's in the same draft here. And nobody's going to get out of the draft here. Uh, Middle pack is getting a big run. Yeah, and you got Stone there kind of leading that charge in that middle pack. I don't know if he uh, saw that sketchiness and just kind of let off and leaving a little bit of breathing room here as we have 12 laps to go. Going to be 11 laps as we got car sideways, able to save it, oh, and big no wreck. big wreck. Five is upside down. It's the big one. Cars are scattered everywhere. Trucks, rather. Four looks like he might have a blown motor. Man alive, that was a... So take that was another quite a, look at that. Wreck. Oh, man, it, just a huge checkup in front and... Uh, Unfortunately, when one person checks up and not a lot of other people do, that is the situation. And unfortunate for uh, Stone Hutchinson having a great race there, kind of just getting rear-ended and causing that whole chain reaction of events. And um, Really, not that many cars directly involved, but the ones that were, man, they are in a rough, rough shape. We've got a couple blown engines, got, uh, you know, people needing to come down pit road otherwise you know their engines probably would be toast but yeah the five machine of steven naylor just flipping onto his lid we've seen that a couple of times tonight uh trucks flipping over and uh that's a wild ride especially for all you guys like me that like to race in vr uh that's pretty scary it looks like the leaders are coming down pit road and not everybody you see here the 31 of Brad Taylor uh, really didn't spend much time out in that front. So a lot of people, I think, maybe playing it safe fuel strategy-wise, thinking, ah, you know what, this one might come down to extra innings. So getting that little bit of extra fuel to top off and be ready to go just in case. But, you know, between you got... Brad staying out, you got Michael staying out, Rodney Griffin staying out, Brian Skidmore staying out. You know, we got quite a few people still staying out there. Same thing with the 51 of Joshua Moore working his way back from two laps down. Now going to be st restarting here in fifth. So we are uh, got a little bit of a change in the guards, everything getting all flip-flopped around. But not only that, it, you know, it, it is turning out to be a kind of fuel race here. Yeah, and Donnie uh, uh, Turboville on uh, uh, Facebook saying, time to get up on that wheel. Talking to Donald in that 64 truck. Trying to get a little motivation going. Yeah, well, they're going to need it. Uh, Ten laps isn't a lot, but uh, I think at Daytona it's it's almost like eternity. Because uh, we know we're going to see one more. Just don't know when. I'm thinking around one, two laps to go. Do we have green-white checkers here? I mean... We do. I believe we have two attempts. Might even have three okay, attempts. Cool. That's one thing I did not check before the race. I'm sorry, all you folks out there. That is one part of my homework that I didn't get done today. I didn't check for great white checkers, but... Uh, uh, good job. You were cleaning out the kegerator. That's more important anyway. <laughs> you know, once again, I want to thank uh, Muleberger Custom Homes for coming on board, sponsoring a few races uh, this season. Up there, Three Rivers, Michigan area. They've been in business since 1997. Uh, only the highest quality, but not the highest price. Uh, that's what their goal is, and they can build your dream home. So uh, they can definitely, if you can think of it, they can make it a reality. So uh, uh, get a hold of Bruce up there uh, at Muleberger Custom Homes, Three Rivers, Michigan. I want one of those. I'm telling you, I wish we had some great quality home builders like that down here in my neck of the woods. I'm sure there's a couple around, but 
th their website's just impressive. Go look. At, these guys overbuild these houses, I mean, in the best way. I mean, wrapping the whole house and, and that Tyvek wrap and uh, Linux furnaces. Sure, Sherwin-Williams paints everywhere. I mean, they're just... They go above That's, and beyond. They really overbuild them in the Sherwin paint. Williams. You could buy a pistol in a Sherwin Williams store back in the fifties. <laughs> My granddad did so. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he was a painter, and uh, he'd go hang out at the paint store Sherwin Williams, and just get buy all kinds of fun stuff: whiskey, pistols, and paint. Yeah, Muehlberger Custom Homes. They use Anderson windows. Uh, uh, they're pretty much a benchmark for efficiency um, if you're if you want a house that's really going to be energy efficient they're going to help you out looks like the pace car's coming down that it is so with eight laps here remaining we're going back to that green flag race and brad taylor and michael hicks up at the front uh getting a pretty good start there was the 76 of hicks he's going to try to jump down in front of that uh 31 of Brad Taylor. It's also going to allow that 75 of Brian Skidmore to uh, move on up in that top line. So, seeing a little bit of action going on already as we are definitely coming down to it. As we're almost three wide up here for the front, and we are. This is for the lead. That 75 getting kind of stuck in the middle. He's going to have to be careful here, and he will find a way to kind of get out to that outside line. But that's also going to allow Rick Spencer Walt to get on out in front of uh, Michael Hicks in that 76. Oh, trying to go three wide again. Didn't quite make it that time. You got a few trucks back here with huge runs uh, catching up to the tail end of this uh, front pack. Oh, man, it's money time now. They're coming up on six to go with the stripe. And, uh,. Time to get up on that wheel. Side by side they go. The 27 of Curtis Critchley having a great race here today. Now working that outside line, trying to get out in front of Rick. He's not quite clear as Rick's bumper was still at that quarter panel, so not able to jump down quite yet, but uh, still making up a whole bunch of ground with uh, both Curtis and Rick coming down that last time for a pit stop. So they are good on fuel. They have nothing to worry about here. So they're turn, able to turn in oh, one the front stretch. Two cars involved. Oh, Bay Area Rob, one of them too. And the six machine. So that's going to bring out another caution here. All oh, dirt keys involved. I don't think this will eat into a green-white checker. They'll probably get the green before 60. Thanks, Lisa Blackburn, for being on YouTube watching us tonight. Appreciate your commentary. Man, alive. Oh, man, it looked like the six of Paul Durkee just getting caught in the middle and pinballed between the two lines and uh, just kind of caused the mayhem. I saw yeah. the 10 of Stone Hutchinson there. You know what? Let's uh, take a ride around with Stone. As uh, he actually got a pretty good view of this as cars were scattering all around the track. Oh, so did the 45. Wow. Take one more look here. Let's take a look from that 45's perspective. Man, oh man, the 45 getting into the 28, just no, nowhere to go as he was trying to get checked up, but other than that, able to get through that mess somehow. Yeah, like we said before, you know, you can get on the brakes all you want, but uh, getting these trucks slowed down from such a high speed, um, if you can't find a hole where they're, you know, go where they ain't, basically. Uh, you're just trying to find a hole through there. No, not, not only that, the guy behind you might not see the braking you're doing, and these trucks don't have brake lights. You're going to have to kind of watch with your own little old eyes. I mean, they're working <laughs> yeah. harder than the real Mrs. Poindexter out there. That's right. On Facebook, uh, Donnie's saying to finish first. First, you must finish. 
and uh, a lot of the guys uh, uh, understand that uh, as super speedway racing, you know, that's not a guarantee you're going to finish the race. There's a lot of DNFs here. We've got a couple cars coming down the pits. Trucks, I'm sorry. I'm saying cars, man. Yeah, the 66 of Paul Ferdiani, he's coming down with some, some other trucks. Rob Chowdhury's in the pits as we speak. Yeah, he took some Dumpy. major damage. Paul Durkee, yeah, a lot of damage out there. Brandon Coleman's coming out of the pits. He must have got that thing worked on. When the new damage model comes to these trucks... Uh, for accidents like you just saw, there's going to be fenders and bumpers and wheels and all kinds of stuff scattered all over the track. I, I really can't wait for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, seeing some more realistic damage. and It's coming eventually. iRacing's working on it, but uh, maybe not for this season. They kind of hold... They kind of... Hold their cards close to the vest sometimes. And yeah, I gotta call a guy. You know, you just always gotta call a guy. I gotta, gotta have figure. to know a guy first to call. Well, you know, everybody has one. <laughs> Get up there in Boston, and work it out with those guys up there. I know they're working their tail off for eye racing. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Talladega is gonna be fun next week, Alan. What do you think about that? Sixty laps, Talladega. It's going to be a little bit longer race than 150 miles. What's 60 laps to Talladega? About 100 and probably about 180 laps, I would think. I don't think it's too much different. I, it, I don't think it's all that much longer. You know, it's not like iRacing Super Speedway being a crazy. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's three miles, but it feels like 10. Uh, but, you know, I, I think we're going to be in store for some of the kind of same action, but maybe. Uh, Maybe a little different. It, it's a little bit wider, a little bit more forgiving here than Daytona. Daytona can actually get uh, pretty narrow in some of these spots. So, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised seeing, you know, three wide, maybe even some four wide action there. And it's only 10 miles difference. It's going to be 160 miles. But, yeah, uh, being a wider track, you may see a, a little bit fewer cautions, hopefully. Uh, you might see some uh, safer three wide uh, race in action. So I don't I suspect the race will be much longer. But we will see. And Nash, thanks for commenting, pulling for stones, saying it's a comeback season. So thanks for joining us, Nash. So here we go down this back stretch, following the pace car one final time. And it looks like we're going to get a green white checker before the green white checkers even begin. So, we're going to have Curtis and Rick up here at the front, uh, taking us to that green flag. Just for all y'all to know is once when we take that white flag, the race will end on that lap. It is just a race back to the line. There will be no more cautions. Uh, so, that's uh, if you wanted to see craziness, that's... Uh, that's when it will really come out to play here as the pace car prepares itself to dive down pit road one more time. And you know what that means. And I haven't said this in a while, but it's time Get it. to buckle up, strap on that drinking helmet and throw inhibition out that window. It's time to go racing here up at the front. Curtis getting a great push up at the front by that 75 of Brian Skidmore. So here we go. Green flag racing. First attempt at a green-white checker before official attempts at a green-white checker. At 31 of Rick needing some help on that top line. Almost getting it there as he's got four trucks compared to the bottom line. As just about everybody on that bottom line moves up to the top line. Trying to make up every single spot that they can. You also got Stone Hunches and trying to figure out the best way to get through this field. Same thing with the 31 of Brad Taylor. Coming through turns three and four. Still just too wide here. No one uh, pushing their luck quite yet. But the 27 of Curtis Critchley uh, leading this one off. Still being pushed by that 75 of Brian Skidmore. The, got the uh, 13 of Rick Spencer Walt on that outside line as we take to this white line. flag. And here we go, three wide racing through the middle of the field. We got wrecking going on behind them, but that doesn't matter anymore. 
as uh, we have taken that white flag so we're racing here until the end that third line trying to get some momentum going forward i believe that is the uh man i don't even know who it is tough to tough to say but he's got the 64 of uh donald uh turbaville working his way up through oh, on that top knows. line making it work he's Damn got room he can jump down as we got even more wrecking going on behind him making his way up through this field doing a great job we're going to be three wide here as we're going to come across the line it's going to be a race between eric stoy and rick spencer walt across the line they come and it's <laughs> gonna be stoy. eric stoy pulling out the photo finish of a win with uh rick spencer walt finishing in second and i think the 54 of brandon coleman able to sneak away here with that third place finish wow rick lepage of that seven just he was involved in one of those wrecks and dropped a lot of spots but uh yeah what a close finish between the 13 and the four that was a great great finish so. what a wild last lap <laughs> kind of what we've expected wasn't it and i'm telling you that was exciting it's we saw the 54 was able to get up there and we saw him making some uh, late moves and was able to weave his way up there and snag a podium finish so good job brandon getting that uh third position yeah man that was <laughs> i don't think we've seen that many trucks finish that close in a long long time man that that could have gone to just about six or seven different trucks I hear a little chatter after the race is some between the 11 and the 28. Oh, I like the fighting. Yep, way back in 19th, he's the last truck on the lead lap, it looks like. Was involved in uh, one of those uh, crashes there at the end. Yeah, Stone's not happy. He made a little comment. Oh, wow. Thanks Anger. to Richard Gray for uh, uh, joining us on Twitch. Saying, hell of a race. Uh, and thanks for the compliments as well, Richard. It's always good to see you. So we uh, just kind of get all settled in here. Let's uh, start off with our third place finisher, and that's going to be the 54 of Brandon Coleman. I know he's not quite a... In that booth quite yet but that's all right we can pull them up here uh, oh did he he's in the ecrc racing yeah. this guy brandon coleman number 54. well and he go he he go trying to trying to pull him up for some interviews here as a Well, well, it's a new uh, season, new learning for everyone. There's no one in podium finisher waiting room. Let's see if we can snag Eric Stoy. Maybe. Well, thank you for posting that, Mr. Turner. I'm on it. Just making sure we have the permissions to pull people into our channel. Uh, which I do. And this is yeah. the uh, first race of the season. It looks like Rick Spencer Walt, our second place finisher, is in the waiting room. So awesome! Right. So got let's one. Uh, bring him on up. Let's do that. We're gonna talk to our second place finisher here first and rick spencer walt man you did a great job up at the front just about all dang race i mean it, it talk about having a great season opener here at daytona i know we got a little little ugly there kind of middle of the race and uh whatnot but still able to fight through and i mean three wide finish here at daytona for a win it really doesn't get better than that unfortunately just uh coming away with second yeah, it was a awesome race for the first one of the season over here. I've uh, never raced with, I think I've only raced with about four or five people that are in this league. So uh, it was a good race up there. We're going to learn to race some people differently and race, you know, you got to race 
and learn to race around all these guys out here because you don't know them. So uh, it'll be a learning process for everybody, but uh, I think it was a good opener. Yeah, it looked like uh, seven thousandths of a second separating you and the four of Eric Stoy. It doesn't really get much closer than that. Uh, uh, did you do a whole lot of practice coming in here? I know they did some practice sessions. Uh, did you participate in, in, in any of those? Uh, and do you think it helped you at all? Uh, I participated in them, but I think I was upside down, and so it didn't help out much. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's kind of, you know, hold a steady wheel around here. There's a lot to actually pick out. My teammates at uh, Refined Motorsports have really helped me out with, uh, you know, perfecting Daytona a lot better, where to run and where to protect, and lines to block and control and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, shout out to them for helping me out a ton here. Oh, cool. you did an awesome job. Let me do a real quick dumb question. You're from Canada. I did a little research. Canada, correct? Yes, sir. Poutine or loaded fries? Which one is Oh, better? man. It depends. You're talking Arby's loaded fries. They're pretty good, but I think poutine's still the go-to because I did have one for dinner tonight with my boy. So. <laughs> awesome. Hey, congrats <laughs> and welcome to the league. I think we're going to have a lot of fun here watching you race. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for all you guys do. I'll uh, watch the broadcast back, and uh, thanks to my uh, teammates from Refined Motorsports, and uh, looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Rick, and uh, good luck on the rest of the season there, buddy. Thank you. All right, so we'll now uh, talk to our third-place finisher of Brandon Coleman. Uh, Brandon, man, that was one of the closest races finishes I've seen in – quite a while work your way up through the field up 20 yes 20 spots uh all the way from the back up to the front man talk about a great season opener here at daytona yeah man that was that was pretty fun um glad to be a part of this league glad to be a part of that race um that was that was a lot of fun yeah we saw you making some moves the last couple of laps there uh, you knew it was time to move, you know, <laughs> and we we saw that sense of urgency in that 54 machine as you drove it up there and the, did the best you can, man, stole away a podium spot. Uh, what do you think the differences are going to be from this week's race and Talladega next week? Talladega, I think, is going to be a lot better. There's a lot more room. You got a lot more. Um, you can actually go four wide at Talladega on the coming to the finish. So it gives you a lot more room if you if you get hooked up with somebody and know what you're doing to get them pushed past. Um, and uh, I'm on, on situations like that. I think I think you're you'd be a fool not to get with Eric and push past because if you try to dive down, you're either gonna cause a wreck or you're not you're not gonna get a position. Well, you worked your way 20 spots up. It, was that kind of your plan? Did you want to start kind of in the back and see how it played out with these guys? I did. Um, I did want to start in the back and see see where we went, um, conserve, and have something for the last 10 laps. Well, man, awesome. uh, you did a heck of a job here finishing up on that podium in third. Uh, before we let you go, you got any shout-outs you need to get out or anything like that? I uh, just want to thank, uh, thank – um, Gregory and all these guys for putting us on and inviting us in and thank you guys for broadcasting and doing a great job and uh, we'll see you next week. Appreciate awesome. it, man. Awesome, man. Yes, we'll definitely see you next week and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Great, thank you. And now on to the big winner here tonight and I guess we can uh, call him a veteran as he was racing here last season with us that's that four truck of eric stoy bringing home the win here in the season opener at daytona man eric it's a uh, great way to start the season off with a win but not only that but with 30 trucks which it's almost i think doubling the field is what we had last season and i mean we essentially had a couple 20 lap green flag runs there so it, it it's good to see we're in for some great racing the whole rest of the season. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that race was pretty wild. I mean, just, I guess, staying patient was the most important thing, but especially with all, like, 30-some trucks. And, I mean, you just got to discipline yourself. Yeah, congrats on the win, man. It's great to see you up front and uh, uh, 
take this win, even if it was only by seven thousandths of a second. What an exciting finish. It was a blast. Uh, last season, uh, HCK Beagles, y'all just ran three tracks. Y'all are throwing throwing some more tracks in there uh, this season. Michigan, uh, Indianapolis, uh, and uh, the All-Star Race is going to be at North Wilkesboro. So out of the new tracks, uh, which one... Which one do you think you'll do the best at? Which one's your favorite? Um, I'm going to say Michigan. I'm a big Michigan Wolverines fan, so you'll see my Michigan truck out there. But I love Michigan, so I'm going to say that's going to be my key track right there. Michigan, I love that track as well. It was fun, fun race to watch. Loved every second of it. Uh, I think this is going to push us forward into a great season. And Hey, man, you got the first one. That's pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, it felt good. I mean, just especially the last lap, I was hanging out in the back pretty much the entire time, and when it was time to go, it was time to go. But it was it was great. It was fun. I enjoyed being out there on that track. Awesome, man. Well, before we let you go, you got any shout-outs to do or anything like that? Oh, I just want to shout-out to Brandon Coleman, the guy who pushed me all the way up to the front. But also, thank you guys for broadcasting this race for us. Oh, yeah. Well, man, we uh, we appreciate that, and uh, again, congratulations picking up that season opener win, and we look forward to seeing what you can do the rest of the season, bud. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And winner, winner. With that, that concludes the racing action here today from Daytona. Holy cow, guys! That was uh, that <laughs> that was good. I'm telling you, man, if the whole season's like this, this is going to be a blast. People have got to, hey, if you're one of the people that watches this regularly, you know, go on M.TV on Facebook, share these streams as they come out, share the promo posts uh, prior to, uh, let's get a, let's build this audience up for some of our sponsors. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we also have a uh, uh, a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel, so uh, it's 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 all about redundancy, folks. And the more people we can get watching, and the more exposure we can get our sponsors, uh, you know, the better. So thank y'all so much. Yeah, and thanks to Muleberger Custom Homes for this race. And I'm gonna put my uh, I don't know I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna put one of these things out where you can put a tip jar and give me some beer money for this. This is I'm having so much fun. <laughs> English and I need beer money, but hey, Brown, we had a great time. It was a great time. So let's uh, tell everybody uh, if their favorite driver had a great time today or if uh, they didn't do so hot as we start off with that race winner of Eric Stoy bringing home that win here tonight with Rick Spencer Walt right there at the line as well, just a little bit short there in second. You also got Brandon Coleman up 20 spots in that 54 truck, uh, rounding out that podium in third. You got Curtis Critchley in the 27 in fourth. He was up front just about all dang race, just uh, kind of sliding backwards towards the uh, towards the end there, but still solid fourth place finish. You got Donald uh, Turboville finishing in fifth with Brian Skidmore in the 75. We saw him making some moves kind of late on in that run, uh, finishing here sixth. You got Rodney Griffin finishing in seventh with the 76 of Michael Hicks in eighth. Mike McMillan in the 21 will finish here ninth with the 42 of Kevin Winker. We saw him up at the front uh kind of putting his nose out there, uh, making a name for himself early, rounding out that top 10. Yeah, in the uh, 11th position, the 20 truck of Justin Lawson. We saw him up front quite a bit tonight as well. Uh, starting in 29th, made his way up into the front pack, and uh, just a little bit of bad luck for him as uh, finishes 11th, but uh, still a noble effort. 31 of Brad Taylor in the... Uh, uh, he started in the top five, finished 12th. Still not a bad outing for Brad. Uh, good job in that 31 truck. 45 of Michael Grenolds finishes 13th. Uh, the 28 of Henry Wyndham in 14th. The 7 of Rick LePage uh, started in 15th, finished in 15th. Looking for so much more, but involved in one of those late wrecks. Uh, the 7 machine 
uh, finishing 15th. The two of Brian Doty finishing in 16th place. Worked his way up from 28th, so good job there. 51 of Joshua Moore, one of our crowd favorites, uh, starting in fourth place and ended up finishing 17th. Uh, the 66 of Paul Ferdiani uh, finishing 18th. The Another crowd favorite, the 10 machine of Stone Hutchinson, uh, starting in 21st tonight. Finished uh, your uh, last car in the lead lap in 19th. And uh, the first car one lap down, the 88 of Zachary Staten, rounds out your top 20. And the other Staten boy, 15, Cody Staten, 21st. 24, Andrew Hansley, the 4th, 22nd. Number 5 is Stumpy, 23rd. 60, of Kyle Jackson, 24th. Number 11, of Wayne Dewey, 25th. 69, uh, Gregory Turner, 26th. The 408, of Rob Chadhury. 27th, Paul Durkee in that 6th machine, 28th. Derek Puckett, we don't normally see him down here in the 8th truck. 29th, and rounding it out, the number 12, Austin Johnson, 30th place. All right, and that is your entire field here for today's race. We thank you all for tuning in and watching and uh, riding along here with us. Uh, we appreciate all the comments and uh, all the kind of things you all say and uh, you are the reason why we do this week in and week out is for you guys it's uh, always been a blast but on that note uh, we're finishing up here from Daytona moving on to Talladega next week we can't wait to see you guys there but until then I'm Alan Brown for Alan English and Adam Turner we're signing off and thanks so much once again to Muleberger Custom Homes uh, MuleburgerCustomHomes.com uh, There's not a whole lot of quality builders out there that'll do what they can do for you. Uh, I mean, they insul they put up insulated garage doors for crying out loud, and that's important up north in the Three Rivers, Michigan area. So thanks so much for them for coming on to sponsor this race, and we'll see them later on in the season. But uh, on that note, we gone. See ya.